anytime I want because I am a person that lives in this town. This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by PorcupineRealEstate.com. Name. What's your name and date. Of, name and date of birth, sir. Name. Name and date okay. of birth. You're under arrest. Okay. Okay. All right. That's me getting along badly with cops. He shall overcome. And teaching myself the hard way that it's probably better to have something funny to say and make a little light of the situation as opposed to singing. This really didn't work. But anyway, uh, the fact is this sort of situation where the cops are coming after me is sort of an exception. It's not the rule. By and large, I, I feel like can, considering the large amount of sort of anti-establishment activism that I do, I have pretty good relations with cops. And I have some, some theories as to why this might be. I've had at least five occasions I can think of off the, the top of my head where I've just kind of been out on the streets uh, and uh, uh, you know a, a cop has approached me just to introduce himself and, and let me know he's a viewer. And, and I, you know, I sense no malice at all in these encounters. You know, it's just like they, they, they've seen a public figure uh, or it's like, it's, I just feel like I would feel if I were a mainstream TV news anchor and a cop had come up to me and introduced himself. It, it felt exactly the same. I tend to either not record those incidents <clears throat> or to not broadcast them. Uh, usually, I guess I, I will kind of go ahead and record just to be safe, but uh, I won't I won't broadcast those incidents because I guess I, I want to sort of reward police for doing something good or right. And uh, since a lot of them are a little bit uncomfortable being recorded, uh, I guess that's sort of my reward for, uh, you know, just walking up to me and treating me like a nice human being. Not a reward I consistently dish out, but anyway, back to the theories. First, I think people in many ways are more sympathetic toward their enemies than they are toward their friends. It's supposedly an evolutionary trait where humans want to understand their threats, that which might be a threat to them. That's what scientists and studies have been indicating recently. But I think it's something else, too. And, I, well, I think people do, in a way, sympathize with their enemies more than their friends in a, in a totally different way. I think it's because of the fact that familiarity breeds contempt. If you have friends that you're around a lot or family that you're around a lot, you know too much about them. This morning's unemployment numbers? Hi. Very disappointing. A lot of people still hurt. People who you treat as your enemies, you don't see them hardly at all. They're never leaving their toothbrush in the wrong place. They're never leaving the toilet seat up against you you rarely have arguments with them unless you maybe you work with them or something uh, but technically those people are your allies so again, it's the folks that you come into least contact with that you're going to have the least friction with and police this really fit that bill you know so you know the average policeman in new hampshire runs into me what once every 10 years maybe they get annoyed at what they see me do on YouTube, but if they get annoyed enough, they don't have to watch. The third factor I can think of off the top of my head is sort of this Babylon 5 phenomenon. There was this uh, concept on Babylon 5 that you, you, the best way to get to know someone is to fight them. Uh, that's when you see the real person. So police probably are used to spending much of their day interacting with people who are trying to pretend like they're friends of the police. So they get the petty thief who's being real nice to the police and trying to convince him that he didn't steal anything. Or the person who wants to work for the police, or the person who wants help from the police. Maybe for them, in some ways, it's almost a little bit refreshing to have someone politely opposing them and wanting nothing from them. They would know from the polite opposition that even when they're a person who is arrayed against you, uh, you're treating them with a certain degree of civility. And also, uh, you're not doing anything to, to them to, to, you know, make them help you. And there's a fourth factor. Maybe it's, uh, you know, a good cop, bad cop situation in reverse. Maybe the fact that, you know, generally I'm fairly polite to police. Uh, they can, they look at me and then they see... Where I want, anytime I want, because I am a person that lives in this town. There's other activists that they might have to interact with who in some cases are not polite to them. So it makes me look less bad uh, to them. 
I don't know if any of these phenomena or are, are you know something that you would find useful to imitate or if maybe you think there's nothing about me that's worth imitating at all but these are just some insights that I've gained from dealing with police over the years or maybe the better term would be observations you're moving to New Hampshire right well then you'll want a free state realtor who's been here fighting for your freedom for years privacy low taxes shooting and growing food on property where you want to be left alone. The folks at PorcupineRealEstate.com understand these needs. They have a good feel for urban New Hampshire, too. Check them out. PorcupineRealEstate.com